Hi, this is Dina with Left Lane Finds. I am walking and talking. It is actually kind of raining a little bit. It's supposed to end in a few minutes, so I think I'm at the tail end of this. It's April and it's just been raining so much, but I still want to get out and get some steps in. Of course, all I'm doing all day long, every day is listing my items. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And also welcome back everybody who's been following along on my reselling journey. I appreciate all of you. My channel has been growing. And I um, do these reseller vlogs every once in a while. I did them more often back a while ago as issues would come up or something, a topic I wanted to talk to. And it dawned on me that I sometimes get some questions here and there that people want to resell or want to try to be a reseller, even if it's part time or just to make some extra cash or maybe just to sell their items, not in a yard sale, but actually online. And they're like, how do I even start with all that? Now, the one thing I never do on my channel is give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on like how to set up like an eBay account or a Poshmark account. I mean, that is just like signing up for any other app. You have to just download the app, answer all their questions, you know, uh, hook up your um, accounts to theirs to be able to pay for things and to um, get your deposits when you sell things. So you have to go through all that and I'm not gonna be doing that kind of um, tutorial on um, my channel here, but there is plenty of people on YouTube that do show you that. The only reason I don't do that is because they change it up all the time. So by the time you would produce a video like that, the apps change the look of it they change how it's going to look um, I think it also sometimes looks different whether or not you have an iPhone or an Android so that's why I don't get into any of that now back in the day when I first started or wanted to wanted to be a reseller I would only sell on um, like Facebook yard sale sites where somebody would come to my house pick the item up and drop off the cash <laughs> That was my first intro into selling things. And some of that was selling my own items where I wasn't really flipping for profit. But then I started buying things to flip for profit and I started doing it that way. My friend had been selling on eBay and Poshmark for years and I was like, I wanna do that. But you know what held me up was the shipping. And I didn't wanna get too into it with her because I wanted to learn it on my own. She would be like, oh, if I sell something, I just go buy a box and I pack it up. I did lots of packing material and, and I take it to the post office and ship it out. And she was like, sometimes I, you know, pay more at the post office than what the person actually paid me for shipping. And I was thinking, that can't be the way this works. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> so I was afraid of losing money. That's the other thing that keeps people from doing anything is making a mistake, losing money. You can't be like that. You have to pay to learn. That is, a, even now, I've been doing this for, it'll be in July, it'll be like 11 years. I still pay to learn. You have to be able to make mistakes, be okay with your mistakes. You have to be okay with losing money. And you might be like, this is not a pep talk. <laughs> so in terms of shipping, it was easy enough for me to figure it out. I was afraid to put anything on eBay or Poshmark. I was almost afraid that it would actually sell and I'd have to ship it out. Well, thank goodness, in the very beginning, I started out with like shoes and handbags and clothing, easy things to ship. So that might be one thing to try, is try shipping something that is not gonna break. If you're not 
into that, you're like, no, I don't want to sell that. I want to sell vintage items. That's okay too. Just know that you have to have plenty of packing material. You have to know that, um, let's say it's um, a vintage vase. You have to make sure you stuff the inside of it as well as wrapping it. If you just wrap it up in bubble wrap, it will most likely come crushed. And you're like, how is that possible? It's like, you have to fill in every void. You have to fill the centers of everything. You have to wrap it a few times in bubble wrap. You have to create like a nest inside the box, cushioning on the bottom, cushioning all around, cushioning on the top. And that all sounds, you're like, oh, that makes sense. But when you go to do it, you're like, oh my goodness, is that enough bubble wrap? Is that enough or whatever? Oh, I picked a box that fits my item. Like if your item is seven inches and you picked an eight inch box, that's not big enough. It has to be at least if you're going to do fragiles and breakables, they say an inch on each side, inch on each dimension. It's more like two inches if you're going to do breakables. Now, if you're shipping shoes, they're not going to break. So that can be almost the size of the shoes. <laughs> um, pieces of clothing you can put in a poly mailer and out they go. Um, sometimes if it's bigger, like a, a, a coat or something like that, you might have to put it in a box. But it's not going to break. You can squish a coat <laughs> into a box, a really small box, <laughs> and out it goes. I don't worry about things getting wrinkled if it's clothing items because there's just no way to ship it that it's not going to get wrinkled and the person at the other end has to de-wrinkle it <laughs> that's another thing i don't don't worry about that much um i definitely wouldn't want to send anything that you know had damage on it <laughs> like you want to send things that are undamaged unless like let's say it is missing like a button or something like that or it has a crack on it or something like that um you definitely have to disclose any and all flaws and price it accordingly i think that's the other thing i see people asking a lot of questions about like i'm on all these different like reseller forums and groups whatever you want to call them and i see a lot of the same questions like how do you price items my mom always ran businesses, so that wasn't an issue for me. She was like, you always have to price items to replace the item that you're selling, plus buy another one. And I'm like, okay, so when you buy something, you want to, say at the minimum, double the price. But being that we have to pay a lot of fees and other things, <laughs> you know, um, you need it to be more than that. You need to cover packing material, your time, like all of that. So you basically need to price things to make enough profit to make this worth it at all. I try to price things three, four times my expenses. I try to buy things for a low expense, but sometimes you can't do that. So on some items I make less and some items I make more. And that's another thing that um, I think some people get in their heads about, I have to make a certain percent or this isn't worth it. Or I have to make a certain, I don't know what, dollar amount and it's not worth it. I'm like, that sounds to me that you were never really into it. If you spend all your time coming up with excuses as to why you shouldn't do it, I don't think it's for you. <laughs> It would be easier to just go get a part-time job and earn the money, the extra money that way. And for someone that would be like, well, that would be, I have a, I would, you know, wouldn't be my own boss. I would have to put in so many hours um, at whatever place it is. And um, I don't know. There's a lot of drawbacks to having a part-time job too. But being even a part-time reseller is way more hours, way more hours course you have 100% control over those hours you can do it any time of the day or night so there's lots of pluses when that were started I was so excited I had listed up a bunch of items on eBay and I couldn't wait to tell my friend about it and I was like I have 13 items listed up I mean it took me a while to do it 
I was just trying to be so careful, making sure to fill out all the fields, make sure I didn't have any spelling errors. I really thought about my titles and, and things like that. And then I would have to go back and revise them anyways, because no matter how careful I was, I would miss details. Or I would think, oh, I forgot to put that in there. And I would go back and revise my details on the description or the title. Another thing I noticed after I put up things on eBay and then eventually on Poshmark was that my lighting was terrible. My pictures were terrible. I was still selling things though, which was ironic. I think it's because cameras, phone cameras, were horrible back then, just absolutely horrible. And so people didn't have too many high expectations. They were more or less reading the descriptions to make sure that that's the item they want, the right size, that kind of thing. And uh, so it wasn't that important, but I noticed some things weren't selling. And when I got a new camera, I went back, grabbed that item, took one more picture, a nice picture, and put that up as the first picture they would see. And sure enough, I was selling those items right away after that. So pictures do matter. Nowadays, people want you to um, have the backgrounds removed or have it all aesthetically pleasing. Um, that's important. Not super important when you're first starting out. I think it's important that you get your descriptions right, your measurements right, uh, your titles, you know, as much detail as you can in your titles. Try to take good pictures. Uh, I have never used a background remover. Um, and maybe it's holding my sales back. I don't know. Maybe if I went and redid all of mine and removed all the backgrounds and prettied mine up more, maybe I would have more sales. I might. That's something for me to consider as I go forward here. But in the beginning, I didn't want to sink a lot of costs, upfront costs, because the little bits that you get back in when you're first starting are so small that you would be in the negative for a long time. Like you can't front load all this expense in the beginning and then be disappointed when your sales don't meet your expenses. You would give up so, right away. I say do it on the cheap. In terms of packing material and boxes, get them from everybody you know. Just say, you don't have to tell them why you need them. Just say, hey, I need a bunch of boxes and all the packing material. Oh, if you don't want to give me the boxes, I'll take all the packing material. And start stocking up on all of that. You might have to buy poly mailers. That's fine. Buy the poly mailers. And then just start listing. <laughs> so I was so excited to get back to my original point here that I had 13 listings. So I called and talked to my friend and she's like, oh, I have 113 or something like that. I'm like, oh my God, she has 100 more than I do. I couldn't even imagine that because I was working full time. I, you know, I don't know, I had, you know, a young child at home, have a house to take care of, like all of that. I'm like, oh my goodness, how does she find the time to do that? Well, then it dawned on me. I started putting things out where I could get to them easily in the morning before I went to work. And I would list two items, like fully list them. Not, they didn't, I didn't do drafts. I don't even know that drafts were a thing back then. I don't even think that existed. I think you had to just list the item. And um, I would do two items. And my thought was, is if I do two items a day, that's roughly 60 items a month. And then keep that going. And that has been my motto for the past 11 years. <laughs> now, do I do that now? Not always. Sometimes, as you guys know, recently I did a giant big push where I did like 20 items in one day. And then I come back and I do two, four. I create like a lot of drafts. I might create like 10, 15 drafts and I work on those. Another thing I've been doing is um, on eBay, they have where you can end your listings. Oh, that's a, I was like, what was that noise? It was actually a woodpecker. He's over there on the, the pole, the electrical pole. <laughs> well, anyways, 
I, back in January, ended a bunch of items. So this is something you can do. You can be like, hey, some of these things haven't been selling for a while. You just need to reset them. And the way to do that is to end your items and then not relist them, but do the sell similar. So I don't do it like 30 and 30. No, I take my time relisting them. You know why? As I look at them, I'm like, that's the wrong price. What was I thinking in terms of the shipping? <laughs> I have a misspelling in there. I'm gonna to add to that description. I'm gonna take something out of the description. Whatever it is, because things I listed up years ago, a lot of things have changed on eBay. And back years ago, eBay used to preload in your description, ship with priority mail or ship with whatever mail, and you would fill that in, like first class mail or priority mail in the description. Well, some of my listings are so old, they still say that. Well, there is no first class mail anymore. And in terms of priority shipping, I want most of my items to go ground advantage now. So it's something that <laughs> you have to go in and maintain your listings. I know this is getting a little bit long in the tooth and I didn't do like, hey, my top 10 ideas here or anything like that. This is just me kind of like talking about things. I had somebody recently ask me, um, how long do you, keep items for sale like how long do you keep them I'm like forever <laughs> I have things that I have listed up six seven years ago still in my inventory I have gone through once in my 11 years and actually um, like donated items back I do have a small pile at the moment that I already took down of a few items that I'm going to donate back that I'm like okay these were mistakes from back in the day where I just thought everything had value and I was going to flip them for a profit, even if it was, you know, only a little bit or something like that. So I do have a small pile of donatables and I want to add to that pile because, yeah, there is some things that I'm like, ah, they might have been thrifting wrongs. You know, that happens. You get caught up in the moment. It might have been a yard sale or... Uh, you know, uh, super sales at the thrift store or something like that. Now I try to look for better quality items, things that have um, a good average sale price, ASP, right? Um, sell through rates are really important for most things, but not all things. Some things, there's just not a lot of them out there. So you're not going to find a huge sell-through rate on some items, but yet they'll still sell and you're still going to make good money on them. So especially in the vintage, in the vintage world, in other worlds, like if you're selling like video games and things like that, I think, or vintage t-shirts, sell-through rate is really important. I still have a really big like death pile, aka money pile, and yet I am still thrifting and I will continue to thrift because I want to get more items, better items. And as I go into that death pile, some of the items may get donated back. Some of the items, it, I might be sitting on all kinds of money I don't even know about. <laughs> Occasionally I go in there and I'm like, oh my goodness, why have I not listed this item yet? You, get, you have all kinds of reasons why you don't do, do things in a timely manner, but you can't beat yourself up over it. You just be like, okay, that's the next item to get listed, along with all my new items I just bought. You'll eventually get through it. And my husband made a comment the other day. He was like, don't you just want to list everything and, and have it completely, your inventory like completely, you know, and sell it and have it completely gone? And I said, no, resellers never want that. And a lot of resellers found that out the hard way during the pandemic when they couldn't go out and source anymore. And so then they listed up what they had and then their sales dropped off because the, the algorithm on most of these platforms is you have to constantly be listing. And when you're not, 
it drops off in terms of sales unless somebody is specifically looking for that item they will see it but if you're not listing all the time they may not see your item they may see somebody else's item that's the same item if they're listing all the time and you're not so that is key to it the other thing that the full-time resellers realize is they ran out of things to list up and then they couldn't source or couldn't source a lot anymore and their income took a dive and if it's your full-time income paying all your bills and all that that was pretty scary so unless you're like oh I am just not gonna do this anymore even if you listed up everything you had it can take years to sell it all <laughs> if you're moving like I did I moved from Pennsylvania to Michigan I was like oh my god I can't take all this inventory with me and this is when I was doing it extremely part-time I have so much more inventory now than I did so what I would do is if I had it listed up on Poshmark for what I thought it could be worth like what I really wanted for it I would put it on eBay for a super discount I was like and it would sell immediately I'm like oh my gosh I'll make well I made some profit not a lot but it sold I kept doing that to get rid of my inventory I was like okay I can't take all this clothes with me so I was just putting them up for super sale on eBay and they were selling and I'm like hmm so I do think about that sometimes sometimes if you hold out for the maximum dollar amount you're gonna be sitting on the item for a while so there's what's called a fast nickel or a slow dime every time I hold out for a slow dime <laughs> it takes a while for things to sell put it up for a fast nickel and they flip but you don't want to be like that all the time so it's kind of like a balancing act between what you price things up now if you have something that you know like I had a pair of jeans a pair of Delph men's jeans that I knew were worth a lot of money and I kept getting lowball offers on it on both eBay and Poshmark I mean super lowball offers like seven dollars nine dollars I'm like hell like I'm not selling it for that like I, I don't unless I really want to get rid of a pair of jeans which I might do for a few pairs of jeans I have now I might put them up for under ten dollars just to get rid of them because I've had them for a while and they're not worth as much as I thought but these jeans I ended up sending an offer for just it was sixty four dollars and ninety nine cents plus shipping and the person accepted it because I had them priced up way above that so I don't know what was going on with that pair of jeans but I mean yeah if I didn't know any better or if I was like I can't keep all this inventory and I just want to get rid of it I could have sold it like four or five times over <laughs> for a, such a low price uh, so if you're sitting on something for too long and you just don't, don't want to look at it anymore put it on super sale you may even take a loss on it or break even on it just to move it out <laughs> that happens too and then if you do get money back let's say you get two dollars back use that two dollars to buy another item that you can flip for a profit I think sometimes people are really upset about breaking even or taking a loss or only making two dollars on something I'm like no that's an opportunity to get another item and improve your ASP <laughs> it's okay it really is there's gonna be other times like those jeans I only paid about five dollars for them and I got a huge you know amount of profit on them that gives me a lot of opportunities to go out and buy some more items plus you know keep a little bit of money for myself you can't just keep building inventory unless you're trying to get from like part-time to full-time excuse me full-time then you need a huge amount of inventory so I only keep I don't in fact I've never broken 400 listings in eBay but I do have a certain amount on Etsy Poshmark whatnot and on knickknacks knickknacks.net I have things cross-posted all over the place for the most part um, 
I think everything is listed. Yeah, I, everything would be listed on eBay. And I keep it under that 400 listings mark. And that's where I want to be. I want to be part-time. I do not want to do this full-time. My friend, who was probably at like maybe 600 and some listings, she decided she wants more income out of it. So she made a goal for herself and said, I want to get to 800 listings. So she did it. She was coming home and listing, listing, listing. She had plenty of unlisted inventory that she could do that so that she could get up to 800 listings. And of course, she made more sales. She makes more money. My nephew, who decided he wanted to do this full time, he literally started with one listing and then him and his family, they take turns uh, helping with listing and taking pictures and all of that. And he got up to, um, his goal was to get 2,000 listings. But what was happening is he was selling so much that every time he didn't even get close to that, he would sell like 20, 30 items <laughs> or more in a week. And then he'd have to replace all those plus try to list more. So um, he uh, still has a ways to go to hit that. <laughs> And uh, it's pretty funny. I'm like, yeah, but you can't complain about the money. He did really well his first year reselling. And I'm sure he's on track to make even more money this year. So this is my, like, reseller vlog. I know it's just me talking. Um, and uh, you can listen to it <laughs> without watching it. It's just me taking my walk here. Um, I was trying to just cover a few things that I just see people asking a lot of questions about all the time and maybe the people that watch me that are full-time resellers or part-time resellers that have been reselling for years this is probably pretty boring and pretty repetitive for you guys but for everyone else who's new to the channel or if you're just starting out as a reseller it's just all things to consider just a ton of things to consider I would definitely join Facebook groups one of them being death pile destruction um, that is cat the nurse flippers group um, there's one called eBay thrifters um, I don't necessarily get caught up into commenting on those platforms I read them though and I take inspiration from them or they'll be like hey there's an eBay glitch like they'll talk about current events in the platforms so I like being notified about that. I don't want to be in the dark about that kind of thing. And uh, so I would definitely join those Facebook groups. Um, another thing that I think is important for your selling platform, but not necessary, is having a social media presence. Now, I know plenty of resellers that have no social media at all. And that's the way they like it. <laughs> they like the anonymity. But the rest of us are out there putting everything out there. And a lot of people are like, why would you do that? Why would you tell people what you bought it for and what you sold it for? I'm like, because everybody knows you gotta make a profit or you're not gonna do it at all. And those items would all go to the landfill. If there wasn't resellers out there doing this or inspiring other people to be resellers, we would have huge piles of all that vintage stuff would just be crushed and put into the landfill. Fill. Uh, there's too much um, new consumerism when there's so much used that's available that is just as good. <laughs> I'm not saying you never buy a, a new thing. That's not a, everyone buys new things. But you could probably do like an 80-20 rule around that. Be like, I'm going to, 80% of my things, I'm going to get used or in a thrift store or something like that where I'm not paying full price for it. Um, like I recently bought a, uh, a tablecloth that I don't really need, but I wanted. It was at a thrift store. It was new in package. I'm like, I got something new for like less than half percent, less, less than 50 percent um, of buying it new. <laughs> and that is just too easy for me to put it in the cart. 
anyways I think I'm done with everything I wanted to like talk about today uh, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna I'm just gonna say uh, have a good day <laughs> and I will catch you guys on the next one oh I'll leave you with this though. in the end of April here um, I am going to be going to Pittsburgh with my reselling friend Sherry and we are going to be hitting up a whole bunch of thrift stores I mentioned it on my Instagram a month or so ago because I was interested in everybody telling me what stores I should hit up so I have a list of stores to hit up and then on the way back as I drive back from Pittsburgh to Michigan I'm going to be going through Ohio so I want to hit up maybe a few more thrift stores we'll see depends on how much I can fit in my car and uh, so I'm going to be stocked to the ceiling with new inventory new to me inventory <laughs> um, my death pile is just going to get so much bigger but that's okay I don't even care I just want to go somewhere new have an experience we might do a little bit of touring around Pittsburgh I've never actually been to the city of Pittsburgh I've dr driven past it dozens of times at this point and so I'm looking forward to vacation thrifting we got the cutest Airbnb so I will be vlogging all of that on this channel left lane finds but also on my second channel starts with coffee adventures in fact I just got done loading up all of my ski videos over there from my Lake Tahoe ski trip that I took back the end of January they're all over there now some of them are longer some of them are shorter some are from my phone some are from my GoPro so there is just tons of videos of, of that and also our trip to Pennsylvania that I took before that and then there will be some other things on there before you'll see the videos uh, from the Pittsburgh trip I'm like what is that noise <laughs> it's over there um, anyways that's my last thought I'll see you guys later